Hey, hey good evening, evening everybody. everybody. I'm, I'm Ryan Lee Harvey from VCN, and, and, and this is the Thursday, Thursday night, night ERT handicap, handicap race. race. Uh, it's 3.2, 3 what, what a kilogram, kilogram limited, limited race. race. Everyone's, Everyone's in a handicap. Handicap. Everyone, Everyone comes, comes into, into the race, race with either a <coughs> weight, weight penalty, penalty or weight, weight benefit, benefit based, based on their FTP. FTP. In, order in order to make, make the, the racing more uh, engaging, engaging racing, racing closer, closer, and, and to make, to make it more challenging, challenging for the elite riders, riders and, and slightly easier for the riders who don't get on that platform frequently. Simple format, platform works really well. Basically, Basically, take your, your FTT, your recent TTP, TTP and, and you divide by 3.2, 3. 2. and that, and that gives, gives you weight, weight to input for the game. game. Um, this, this is the, the only time in, in virtual, virtual racing, racing where, where you, you can, can change, change your weight, weight for an event. Other than this, this you, need you need to make, make sure that, that your, your, rate, rate, your weight, weight is um, as, as close, close as, as is possible to real your weight. weight. The RGT platform, 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 you don't, you don't need to include any additional weight, weight. You, don't you don't need to, to work out the weight of your equipment, or the weight of your um, water bottles, bottles, bikes, etc. Because that's, that's already accounted, accounted for in the game. game. They, they, they add, add uh, a same, same set weight for every person. person. Except, 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 except kilograms, kilograms in the RGT world, world for, for allowances for fighting for equipment. equipment. So you, so you just add in your weight. But as I say, in this race, the elite riders, superior. Inferior. Which I tend to use. Yeah. yeah. The elite riders, those, those will have more, more FTP. FTP. Um, um, they'll, they'll be carrying, carrying more weight. weight. Uh, I think the, the record, record for the weight, weight carried in this race, race stands around around about 40, 40 kilograms. kilograms. Uh, uh, a, lot a lot of the riders, riders are carrying around 20 to 25 kilograms. The equivalent of carrying a whole sack of potatoes on your bike whilst you're going out doing a race. So, so yeah, quite, quite, quite a, a challenge, challenge for these riders. riders. Um, a little, little bit of other news going, going through. Uh, we have BCN, we cover all the events on RGT. Um, <coughs> cover PRT events every Thursday, we also cover the super events. We have riders, we cover the race, for example. Some are on a little bit of a loose basis, some we do do more regularly. PRT is one of the regular events that we do. We have, we have a shop. shop. We have, we have the VCN, VCN shop, shop, the, the VCycling News shop, shop vcyclingnews.co.uk, um, where you can get some merchandise. And, and the reason I mention that tonight is because we've just added, added to the VCycling News shop, shop vcyclingnews.co.uk, uh, the, the new BRT handicap mug. Um, one, one of the, of the big, big parts of this race, race is the competitivity award. award. Um, some, some of us have a competitivity award mug. We, we enjoy, enjoy coffee, tea, tea and beverage as well. You can, can now buy that, that from the Vice Cycling News shop, shop and, and personalise it with your, your name, name um, with the, the official, official PRT, PRT mug, and you can, you can go, go into the Vice Cycling News shop. shop. If, if you, you win the competitive award, you can add your name to it and it will remind you of the victory that you had in it. Fantastic race that you had every time you drink from it. Um, I'm going to head over, over to, to a quick, quick re-live, talk, talk us through, through the course, course and we'll have, have a look, look at where we're going, going. see what's in store for the riders tonight. tonight. So. Tonight's course called Bear of Berg. It starts off near Berg Island. Um, we are immediately into a pretty aggressive slope. Um, that will slow down many of the, the heavier riders who've got the, the higher FTPs and, and reduce them slightly, giving the lighter riders a, a moment to launch straight from the line, get themselves off and up and running and open a gap up on those heavier riders, which they'll have to try and close down. And we've gone, we set off already. Well, there's a bit more there we see. Wayne, known as the Wayne train, is flying off the front of the race. Missed the start of the race. Terrible, terrible Riley. Um, Wayne flying off the front. We've got Darren Ray there coming up. And Will Deegan with Wayne there. Uh, heading into this aggressive slope. Ben Lowe, Will Deegan. Uh, we've got a few new riders tonight as well. Um, Roe is a name that I don't remember seeing very frequently. Uh, Andre Fugara there is a regular on the races um, but Wayne known as the Wayne train he takes a fantastic 
turn of speed off the front there. I'm just going to zoom in on David Bruckhausen there. David is riding the uh, new Buffalo bike, which has been added into the game just recently. Um, it behaves and acts exactly the same as the rest of the bikes on RGT. But um, every year, RGT do an event in conjunction with the World Bicycle Relief Charity, which is to um, aid fundraising for the World uh, Bicycle Relief. Um, you have to ride 8,848 meters in elevation, also known as an Everesting. And this year, for doing that, you got rewarded with an in-game Buffalo bike. So WBR do a lot of fundraising to, to raise money for these very durable bikes that they give to um, different people in less fortunate countries. And that enables those people to do, um, I might, for example, it aids a doctor to make it around his patients and do his visits. Um, help somebody go and get water, deliver, receive, transport food, get to a job. All these sorts of things become possible with one of these Buffalo bikes. Um, very weird position for David there to be sat and unlike uh, the rest of the racers over their handlebars, but uh, the bike works just the same as the rest of the bikes in game. So we'll fly forward now, just check out what's going on at the front of this race. Um, Maisie, one of the bots. So we've got real bots now. So the bots react and work differently in the game to how we, we, we used to. We used to have just pace bots, which stayed at a steady rate. But now we've got bots that react. And I believe they're AI bots. They're learning bots. So... We can see them changing their dynamics as the, the game progresses and they learn more. We've got Stuart Lidlow at the front now, one of the PRT athletes. <clears throat> so we are live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch and a number of the other platforms. Um, we have all of the chat come into a central location. So if you want to ask any questions, over the chat we are here we are listening um send over your messages and just seeing there um ruin iberson is a hola go prt and mike lister is just mentioning that the bike looks great and it and it does it's a very cool looking bike very unusual for um a racing platform so i think part of the reason it does look, looks awesome because it's just something different something new for us to look at uh, Got the in-game chat up as well. The the races. So, got a couple of new riders tonight. Uh, Williams and uh, H Andy, new riders. And we got some regulars. Anton Wooters. I think we might have a few missing out of the game tonight because there, are, there was an update this week um, and a few people I think have been late hitting the update. So we might be missing a few people off the race that would normally be here. We've got Hebrato in 10th position. Ludlow in 8th. Martins is up there at the front with Mai. Martins and Mai there. Martins was quite near the front for the, the most of last week's race. Um, ended up having some quite unusual attacking strategies as we just come into the top of this first climb. Been hitting in at five point something degrees most of the, the climb there. Uh, Janssen's coming through, just passing Ludlow. Creston, see that it's dropping down now, that gradient's easing slightly. 
Now, up in the top right-hand corner, we've got a new feature, which is the TSS, the Total Suffer Score. And we see we're, we're on Stuart Ludlow now. We can see that's creeping up. 25 now. Uh, have to see if he manages to top it out at the 100 mark before the end of the hour. I'm going to drop down the field onto this flatter section, a bit of descending and then flat. Not as much elevation in this course as we usually have in the handicap races. Um, well, I say not as much elevation, not as much aggressive climbs. There's only sort of two, two sections of aggressive climbing. Um, the rest of it's made up by little rollers that are just going to be consistently testing the legs. We're going to go back through the field, see who else is in here. We've got uh, Walker Storff there, Nips, Darren Ray. Darren was the winner of that Combativity Prize last week. He's being closely chased by Will Deegan. Will Deegan coming through on this latter section. Giving Darren his wheel there, it's very kind of him. Matt Barker, and then we've got Lou Gelling, closely followed by Will Usher. Will is the uh, lead coach of PRT, and he's also the designer of these races, these courses. Well, designs many of the courses, not quite all of them, but um, designs many of them and takes part most Thursdays. He's got phenomenal kick on him so if he's taking you to the finish line you've got to watch out for a little sprint from him as we get near to the finish line and that group's just being joined by Ben Lowe and making his way through the field now yeah, Andrew Vergara there just in front of IK and Muz Ian Murray Simaro there's Alt there in 24th position. Maro is displaying his weight there after his name. See many of the riders displaying some of their name, whether it's the weight or their age category or their team. Quite often showing up at the end. And we've got a little grouping here. Bland, Jensen, Ray Usher, Wayne. What's back there? We've got Hooveners just behind them. Another group with Healy, Bartle and Ellis. Some support coming through on the, the chat for you, Will. Ruin is um, giving you a big shout out. Come on, Will. Yeah, he's expecting big things from you tonight. I see David there with Ursula and Archard. Archard is another new rider on the platform tonight. Well, on this race tonight. Andy. Barge Sutherland. Anton Wooters. We Bev Usher. Being closely followed by Saysel. Ian Hurst. Company of Bot Geo. A little bit further back, we've got Rob G, Joe Johnson, Tom Smith, and Dreening. Dreening, I'm not sure whether Dreening started late again. Last week, Dreening had a phenomenal run through the middle section of the race. They just came through everybody to be up at the front. Um, Challenging for the first over the line. That way back again tonight. Let's see what they do, see how they move forward. Otten. Borken. Gurk. 
And then that's it. We'll fly back up to the front end of the race. I see Mai there going off the front of the race. Um, Mai's up at 4.2 watts per kilogram. I think from memory that Mai is, is a rider that often forgets to change their weight for this event. Um, those that weren't listening on the intro at the beginning of the race, I explained how you, you work out your weight for this race. It's the only race that it's um, allowed that you change your weight for. It's a handicap race. That's the idea. Um, you work out your weights that you go into this race for by taking a recent FTP, dividing your FTP by 3.2, and then using that figure that's generated as your weight in game. Now it's important that you do it in kilograms because it is based upon a 3.2 watt per kilogram calculation. Um, not quite sure how you do it in pounds. I think you'd, you'd have to use the divide your weight in pounds by your pounds per kilogram, but um, I work all that in metrics. I can't tell you how to do it. Right. So I believe from memory, my, I think, is a little bit forgetful. So. Well, we won't spend too much time on my in this race because they're already 460 meters clear of the rest of the field. We're so dropping back here. We've got Janssen's, Martins, Hebrito, and we've got a bot in there, Mercedes. As we said, earlier on um we do have a podium for this race the podium is checked by will after the race he goes through and he looks at everybody's watt per kilogram checks whether they were within permissible levels and uh, does some uh informing of those that aren't and they uh they get asked to step down from the podium um, so you, you have a revised podium at the end of the races, but the major, major point in this race is the combativity award. It's voted for by the riders on WhatsApp. It's voted for on the in-game chat. And <clears throat> the idea is that basically anyone that's really gone the extra mile, whether that's towing one of their teammates for miles in the race, whether it's making a bridge from an impossible distance or whether it's just making continued attacks and they get voted for for the combativity award and that, that's really the, the major prize in this event as you see Janssen's just sitting up a little bit there perhaps feeling the pace a little bit too hard there Martin's coming back to his wheel uh, Hubrito is still on the front pulling this group Jansen's come back. Martins flies through into first place. Our provisional first place after um, adjustments. Martins up there in the bright red power band, which is um, I think it's referred to as neuromuscular. It's the the um, power band that you really aren't expected to be in for very long at all. The um, brief sprinting period kind of power. But Hebrito and Janssen's there in the company of Mercedes the bot. Got a little bit of a grouping here. We've got Walker Storff there, Vegan Ludlow, just to be joined by Matt Barker. Walker Storff there sporting the next unsured kit. Vegan and Ludlow both in the PRT kits. Matt Barker at the back, I think, is in the World Bicycle Relief Kit. Some groups there. Nips soloing at the moment. He's got Ben Lowe's made a good turn of pace there from Ben. He's come up from around about 18th position down to 11th now. Um, but he's being joined by this big group, this big group on the downhills, just reeling him in. Ugarda there. Willisher, Darren Ray, Lou Gelling, and just 
off the back there is oh, drifting off the back. Oh, it's a bot. It's Camila the bot. See Willisher there just being unfortunately auto braked for a moment on Nips there. And he's having to put in a bit of a, a burst of speed there to reel back in IK and just get back into the group that he was with before. So RGT has um, a number of algorithms that run through it to give you drafting benefits and work out positioning on the road. Um, but one of those algorithms does sometimes decide that you should be drafting a rider rather than passing them. Um, and it can do you a favor just to give it a little bit of kick on the power as you're coming up to a rider to make sure the algorithm knows that you want to pass that rider and doesn't sit you in in their drafting pocket. Um, we'll get a little bit of support now from Ruiner. You got this, Coach Usher. As he says, Coach Russia, so I wonder if that's Coach Raya. Well, after clarification on that point. We've got Williams having a chat there in the in game with I think it's Cecil. Just getting offering his wheel up. A little bit of camaraderie, a little bit of a friendship. That usually fades in the the dying meters of the race. The IK just trying to stay with this group. Darren Ray and Andre Fugara there. Just pushing on at the front. A little bit of an incline going up at 5%. Andre over this first. And he's going to be into a solid descent here. We'll see how the pack dynamics vary compared to a solo rider. He's trying to make up the, the gap to Walker Staff there. Um, see, jumping forward to Walker Staff. At, Walker Staff's on that descent and he's continuing to power away. I don't think Andre is going to reel him back in. Gap there is at 42 meters of Volk. I'm not sure if it's Walker Staff or Volker Staff. Is still pushing, still applying the power there. A lot of power on a descent, 5.4 watts per kilogram. He's trying to close the gap to Ludlow in front of him. And Andre is trying to close the gap to him. Right, he's managed it. He's managed to group up with Will Deegan, Ludlow, and Martins there, and Andre is not too far behind either. So as this little section flattens out, I think Andre might just catch up to the wheel of Martins and use him to slingshot to this group on the front. Will Deegan kicks. Will's putting down some power now, 6.7 watts per kilogram. Opening up a gap. Do it, Ludlow. Trying to close it down. Will has opened up a 30 meter gap there in a matter of seconds. He's eased off slightly on the power, but it's on the flat section now. Got in front of him, but Hebra 2. Hebra 2 is caught. And then not too far away, we've got Janssen's. We'll see, will Will just stick with this group now? Will he try and push on again? I believe Will Deegan is one of the slightly heavier riders, so got a good power, but he suffers on the inclines. This might, with some of these flatter sections and just these little power climbs, this might be a course that's suiting him better than some of the um, other courses we race in the PRT handicaps. This Hebra 2 runs onto the front, but the power not really pushing it. Going to end up with a big group in a moment as Matt Barker comes through. Stuart Ludlow's catching and also Andre Fugara there. Not too far behind this group with it. 
Next group on the road, Ben Lowe, Will Usher and Darren Ray. And Matt Barker on the front of this group. He's shot off the power of Volker Staff. They're all freewheeling now. <clears throat> Nobody's pushing this group forward. See Ludlow and Fugada making a catch. Fugada comes through with the draft straight onto the front. Will Deegan just back of this group, making sure he's not dropped, but nobody. As we see Matt Barker there taking up the lead. He's just putting a bit of effort in at the front there. Will Deegan chasing as well as Hebrato. You're seeing the shout there. Ben Lowe is shouting, pull, pull, pull in that chasing group. They want to catch. And there is Ben. There's Ben. He's not too far away from Andre Fugada there. But he's left, leaving the group behind. Martins, Usher, Lou Gelling need to get to the wheel of Ben. They need to work together. They're reeling that group in front. Ben made it to the wheel of Fugada there. As has Usher. Usher's pushed on, trying to get to that next group. Volkerstorf. Come on, Will. Stick with Will now. You can see in the top left hand corner, Will's power. He's pushing out 197 watts there at the moment. And just there, uh, we can see the drafting graphic coming into view. And we can see the yellow rider, Volkerstorf, that he's just edging towards at the moment. 17.2 meters gap. Drifting out again now. And we see Darren Ray has made the catch with Will. Will's eased off the power. He's jumping on the wheel of Darren Ray there. And IK there as well. Come on, this little group. Come on, Darren, IK, Usher. You can make the catch. And we're still on the cockpit with Will Usher now. I can see he's saving 140 watts. Darren pushes on and Darren's going to make the catch. IK, not quite putting the effort in there at the right time. And Will over the top of Darren Ray and onto the wheel of Janssen's. He's saving 100 watts there. Come on, Darren. Little downhill section. Need Darren probably needs to leapfrog Will here just to help with that catch. He does. IK come through. Before too long, we're going to be into this climb. Guys need to have rested slightly before we hit that climb. Will is in the main pack now, this lead group. Time. Darren and IK grouping in as well. And Will Usher, Darren and IK leaving that group behind. There's a little bit of decimation there. Ben not quite managing to make that move. He was the one shouting up. But he's now giving his wheel to Lou Galling and he's pulling Lou. Putting the effort in for his teammate. Andre Fugada is distance now as well. As Lou, Lou kicks on the climb. Lou loves a good climb. Picking up the wheel of Darren Ray there. And I think on this climb, she might just be able to catch up to that main group at the front. See, Will suffered slightly on this climb.
who goes through in the eighth position up to the wheel of Walkerstorf. 147 watts there. Not much drafting benefit to be gained on these climbs. They're that. The gradients are that steep and the speeds slow down so much. I think it's around about 14 kilometers per hour when you're getting drafting benefit. Anything below that, it's not really worth it. Not really noticeable. It's always worth it. Even one watt's worth it. Lou's just pacing herself now. Slowly reeling in IK. And Volkerstorff in front. Sit in the cockpit with Lou for a moment here while we get over this climb. And then we'll run back through the field. Yeah, you know, the rest of the riders are progressing. Will Usher is not completely given up on this climb. He's spending some power now. He's got Martins with him. He's only 20 meters behind the wheel of Lou. Then once it flattens out slightly, he'll be back with Lou Galling and they'll be quickly up to the wheels of IK on Volker stuff. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, if you'd just like take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And if you're on Facebook, if you can hit the like button and if you can like the VCM page, that would do nicely. Much appreciate that. As mentioned at the beginning, we have the VCN, the Vcycling News Shop. It's vcyclingnews.co.uk where you can get lots of memorabilia, uh, mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, with many of the logos of the teams that you see through the RGT world. Lou now managing to reel in IK and we've got Martins coming up to Lou's wheel as well. Will's just Gaps open slightly to Will at 36 metres now. It's holding steady in front of Ben Lowe. Wonder whether those two will pair up on the flatter sections. Two big engines. IK's putting a dig. Coming up to the crash to this climb. Gradient up. Nearly 10% now. So for score for Lou is up at 55. I suspect we are going to see Will pair back up with Lou. Latter section. And then probably Ben Low will make it to them as well. Gap's going to open quite considerably. We're at 83 metres now back to Will as this course has levelled out. Already it's increased up to over 100 metres. So that was the second of the major climbs on this course there are a number of rollers a number of little power climbs um, it's the, the major parts of the climbing done there is a little bit of um, hill towards the finish line as we will now suffer so score up at 56.6 top right hand corner of the screen it's a new feature for RGT just included in this latest update Also included in the latest update was the change of the graphic to the top right hand corner. 
So that now used to be just a white line and it now shows as a shaded area. Not sure whether I prefer that one. I think the white line was easier to read. Back with nips. See Barge, Darren Ray. Just going up to the wheel of Barge there. Sutherland. Now grouped her with Andre Fugada. Andre was um, pushing to, to make that front group earlier on, but perhaps he's burnt a few too many of his matches there and dropped back. Now sitting on the wheel of Sutherland. Flatter area. Mara Desault. Making it easy now, he's made it over that climb. Group rating. Stuart Ludlow with Bland. And then we've got Muz. Hoovnaz. First time that I've seen Hoovnaz on this uh, course. I may have missed them earlier on or they started a little bit late. Bro. We've got Wayne, Raya, and Anton Wouters with Bartle. Ely, Archard, David Brookers and with Ursula, maybe the only one sporting the Buffalo bike on the course. Andy Jensen. Greening in 42nd position tonight. Um, just coming up to the top of that second significant climb. As I say, Dreening last week absolutely powered from the back of the field. Don't know whether they've perhaps gained on their FTP and have increased their, their handicap this week. Maybe they're just taking it a little bit easier this week. Greening comes to the top of that climb there. Eases slightly. Now we take Maisie the bot. We got Williams. Offering his wheel up to Saysel. A little belly on. Saysel. Rob G. Joe Johnson. Missing Barry Wilson tonight. Barry's, uh, I was going to say he's off, but you know, not a job. Uh, Barry's got a little bit of a, a cold tonight, so he's uh, taking the evening off. So missing Ollie as well. I know that Ollie was struggling to get on the turbo trainer as regularly at the moment. It's got Bev Usher. Tom Smith. And Watton, another rider that I didn't catch on the earlier run through. I don't know whether they have again started late. Races, I'm mentioning that people start late. You can't start a race late. Once the race has started, you cannot join it. You can with a group ride on RGT. You get you can join a group ride at any time during the, the ride. Um, you get put in near to the the race organizer. Um, but you cannot join a race late. You can, however, join the race at the correct time, but maybe not be able to jump immediately on your bike. I know that some riders, that they just might get through the door at the last minute, turn the computer on, get the race running, go off, get changed, and then jump back on the bike and sort of appear a little bit later on. I don't know, I've missed Watton earlier on in the run through, so maybe that's what they've done. Got Corkin. Got Ian Hurst. Ah, Ian Hurst has paused. Um, hope Ian will be able to get back into the race. I know Ian the other week 
um, broke a chain on his bike. So he had to very quickly jump off and change his bike before it came back into the race. I hope he's not having more technicals. And we'll fly back up to the front end of this race. Um, that's May at the front. Say fairly sure from, from past history, from memory, that May is um, possibly not changing their weight they should be doing to compete on an even playing field with the rest of the races in this race. They are 1.47 kilometers in front of everybody else. And anybody that's seen these races before, the leaders finish about 30 seconds in front of the rest of the field. So to be that far in front is a little bit, um, yeah, it, it looks like something's wrong there. Maybe miscalibrated miscalib equipment. But it, so Janssen's now is looking like our current leader on the road. And Herberto uh, taking over with Will Deegan following and Matt Barker on his wheel. Matt's a strong rider as well. A couple of comments coming in on the chat. Um, we've got Spencer Littlechild who's commenting it's a lot easier watching. Um, yeah, the, if you do these races, the, the great thing about these races, because of the handicap, if you're not, if you're like myself, you're not an elite racer, you, you don't really win a lot of races when you enter them the handicap race you have a chance it's you're very close to that front group you're very close to being able to win these races because of the benefit of the the weight changes um and it makes you try harder there's a number of times when i've done these races and my heart rate has been at max virtually all the way through the race it's been been at that end because it's just like I can make that rider I can make that gap I can do that I'm so close and it really does get the best out of the riders having this competition I think that's why a lot of the elite riders enjoy doing it so much because that they've got the competitiveness they've got the the other riders who are really pushing them and it makes it a race for everybody not just a race for a few there are races that I've been in where I've, I've tried to be competitive but you just end up losing the front group and you effectively you sit up after a little bit and you go, you know what, I've got no chance of winning it. I'm going to take it easy. Um, these races are a bit different. They really do grab you, become more engaging. If you're watching the streams, you'll see so many of the racers that are on this race are here week after week after week. They, they do this race every time it's on. So that's, that's me. In the sale, sales pitch for the PRT handicap races, I'll go back to the coverage. We've got Barker, Janssen, Herberto and Deegan in a tight grouping here, heading down the descent. Got one little kicker, a flat section, and then the climb to the finish line. It'll be interesting to see if any of these riders try and distance the others on that flat section. Um, looking on the end game chat. There's uh, not much being talked about in this front group. Probably the, the racers are busy trying to control their efforts and trying not to uh, faint on the bike as they're pushing hard. Barker, Herbert to Vegan there. Janssen's just tucking in at the back. We're going to fly through the rest of the field now. We've got Volkstaff, Martins and IK in a grouping just further back on the road. A little bit further down, we've got Ben Lowe. He's no man's land now. He's past Will Usher and past Lou Gelling as well. He's trying to group up with this Group of three in front of him, but he's got 119 meters to go. We've got this descent section, small kicker. I think Ben will probably catch them on the flatter section after that. Um, 
You can see them just in the distance there going around that next bend. It is interesting to watch some of the racers and how they race. If you're doing the handicap race for the first time and you, you're either shedding weight or gaining weight, it can be a little bit interesting because some riders don't really take into account how much that weight is going to affect how they race. Um, it really does change how much you use the natural characteristics of the course, how much you use the climbs, how much you use those sharp corners to accelerate out of, to, to really allow you to open up those gaps. Um, and if you're putting on an extra 20 kilograms for the first time, not really thinking about it, you can burn yourself out in some of the climbs because you're trying to cover them too quickly. See, Ben's grouped up there with that grouping of IK, Martins and Volkerstaff, but Martins is instantly flown off the front of that group. See, I wasn't expecting Will to have made it back in there. Will's just uh, going back in and Lou's not too far away, only 18 meters behind the um, Ben there. Good bit of descending for those two. Is Barge not too far away as well. Barge earlier was riding with Darren Ray, so he's made a, a good little bit of a distance up there. We've got Sutherland being closed down by Nips on this climb. Nips going through. Andre Fugara, Bland, Darren Ray there. Sorry, Ludlow, Darren Ray. Darren is just off the back of that group. We'll make it back in before Darren's suffering a little bit on these climbs now. Those kickers can just take it out of the legs after you've done a couple of significant climbs. There's all out of that. A little grouping of Anton Wouters, Murray, and Wayne and Raya. And that explains Anton's comment. Anton commented in the um, chat that it's a three against one, so that must be what he's referring to. He's sat with three of the PRT riders. That won't be very good for him running into the finish of this race. See how much they work together. Anton's just pushing on at the front there. Raya enjoying a bit of drafting at the back. Healy, Bartle, Archard, Rowe, Uvenaz, Brooke Husen and Ursula just on the end of this descent, just heading into the climb. Andy, Bart's got Dreening there. Been making fairly decent progress through this race. Jensen isolated. Williams isolated as well there. 160 meters to the rider in front, but um, 330 meters to the box behind. Rob G in the company of a few bots. Taysel with him as well. Joe Johnson. Tom Smith. Evershire. Watson, Hawken, Ian Hurst, glad to see that he's got underway again. I'll have to check in with Ian and see what the issue was this evening. I'm going to fly back up to the front of the race. Team May is finished. Well, Herberto, Deegan and Janssen's now. Tight right, grouping of four coming up under the 1K marker. who is going to be opening up the sprint first. Remember, it is an uphill finish. So expecting the riders to keep their powder dry until the last moment. I did try and guess the winner last week and um, 
Tola gave them the kiss of death. Janssen's push is on. Janssen's 430 watts opened up a small gap over Deegan. And Deegan up at 6.1 watts per kilogram. Not letting him go. The two other riders, Matt Barker and Herbert Throw, have been dropped now as Janssen continues pushing forward. Small, small little brief descent there in this final climb as the gradient goes red again. We go up to 10.8 degrees. And there goes Will Deegan. That's Will Deegan. I think that's all in for Will now. Only 330 meters left. Janssen's responds. Janssen's gets to the wheel, sits on it. Not prepared to go past just yet. Deegan eases slightly. Janssen's into the lead. Deegan easing off a lot. And he's going again. Deegan digs briefly, eases off. Janssen comes through. Deegan goes again. Janssen's answering. 50 meters to go. Janssen comes around Deegan. Janssen just takes it from Deegan. Drop back. We've got Barker and Herbert Throw. Barker's managed to drop Herbert Throw on the, these gradients. That was a tight, tight race there from Janssen and Deegan. Janssen just managed to overhaul as uh, Barker comes through. I think that's third position for Barker. Herbert Throw in fifth. Barge. Coming through in sixth. As I say, we're bumping everybody up a position here. I'm pretty sure that May is out of the racing. Barge, 200 meters to go. Got a tight group behind him. Martins, Usher, and Ben Lowe. That'll be an interesting final section there they're already ramping up the power barge has got 80 meters left to go that's barge over the line and see will will opening up the power distancing martins will come through martins behind then ik and then volker stuff Ben got dropped there. Ben got dropped in that final section of climbing. We've got Mercedes. Bot there. Not interested in bots. We've got Lou Gelling. Final little kick. 13th position. So probably 12th for Lou. Coming over the line. No Sutherland and Nips. Sutherland far enough in front of Nips here to. Take 13th position. Nips is in 14th. Stuart Ludlow went through in 15th for the final burst of power. Shuts off the engines and coasts over. Bland managing to drop Bugada and Darren Ray. Darren now distancing Andre. Land over the line, 16th position. Darren opened up a massive gap there in a brief period over Andre Fugara. Comes over in 17th. Fugara shutting down, coasting over. 18th position. I've got Muzz there. Front of Wayne Train. Over 19th, we've got Desault, Ray Russia, Wayne Train. Desault opening up a sprint now, makes it over in front of Wayne. Wayne takes it from Ray and Anton Wouters. Anton suffering there from the 3v1. And Healy in front of Camilla Bot here. Have to be a bit wary of the bots now on the roads. They are 
real bots, they react. When they see that finish line, they do start up in the power. Will take that position off you, they are ruthless. Healy coming over the line, 24th position, Bartle just behind, 25th, and David Brookhusen on his buffalo bike, Archard, 29th, broke 28th, Ursula, they're just taking the position on the line there from Ian Rowe, there's Ian Rowe, Rowe. Iro, Juvenaz, hundred and seventy meters left to go. Quick shout out for those who haven't liked and subscribed. If you have a moment, if you can click those buttons, it helps us get more recognition in YouTube. It helps get the videos seen more and helps to get RGT out there more to the populace. Juvenaz comes over in 31st. Andy. First time racer. Enjoyed the challenge. Over the line. Williams. I think Williams is another first time racer. Welsh flag. many moons there was a campaign to have the Welsh flag added into the platform 34th position there draining 37th there's a little bit of misunderstanding by some of the programmers who didn't realize that the United Kingdom not only have the Union Jack the United Kingdom was split up into more countries each with their own individual flag uh, in the early days there was the only the Union Jack and after a little bit of um, Facebook persuasion I should remember the name of the gentleman there was one particular gentleman uh, dreaming over the line there was one particular gentleman who um, I don't have to say is relentless with the um, insistence that's not the right word, but he, he was relentless in his campaign for having the uh, Welsh flag added to RGT. And they did. RGT is very good at responding and listening to their users. They did add the Welsh flag and very shortly after that they added a, a whole range of extra flags. Um, not that being the, the Saltair and the George Cross. See Rob G now. 3.5 watts per kilogram. <clears throat> Been waffling tonight. I've not gone over too many of the features of RGT. Um, Rob G over the line, 44th, but we're giving him 43rd position. And Cecil comes over in 44th. Managing to distance Jensen. In the top left hand corner of the screen, we've got the power. Cadence and heart rate. And then just below that, we've got the power history, which shows how the power has been applied in a brief period. In a graph form. Joe Johnson's coming up now, 49th position. The Joe Johnson now is not wearing a heart rate monitor, or at least they've not got it connected to RGT. See that they've got cadence and they've got power registering. Um, the power top left hand corner is the power in watts. 
by the side of their name in the rider listing on the left hand side they've got their power in watts per kilogram so the watts per kilogram is um how many watts you now in relation to your weight as we mentioned earlier on your weight's been adjusted for the game so should be running around about 3.2 watts per kilogram as an average and in the top right corner we've got the newly added total suffer score and you can see joe's there she's up at 89.8 now ranking towards the 100 mark i think the way the suffer scores worked out is you shouldn't be able to get over 100 within an hour Shows that Joe's been putting in the effort on the ride. Twenty meters left to go for Joe. Fine. Tom Smith. Tom Smith, one of the riders in the Team Lou colours. Tom Smith is actually in Team Lou. There's a number of teams on RGT. Uh, some of them have come from different platforms. Some of them are real world teams. And some of them are teams that have grown up through the RGT platform. Team Lou is one of those teams. Lou, Lou Ricks is the, the Lou that's referenced in the, the jersey. Lou is one of the early adopters of the RGT platform. And <clears throat> he started the Team Lou group rides on Saturdays and Sundays. Stuck with them for a long time. He's still doing them now. Rides very frequently on the platform. And that's Tom over the line, just over 57 minutes. Back with Bev now. Um, yeah, so Lou does the rides every weekend. They're three o'clock UK time. And it's uh, 10 a.m. New York time. But he's usually there himself. Um, if not, he has a, a group of riders who marshal the rides for him. Um, there's loads of fantastic rides that happen in RGT. And there's lots of community that's sprouted up there, around those rides. Bev comes over the line. With Watton now. And Watson's wearing a series leader jersey there. I'm not sure whose jersey that is. What? Anybody tell me whose jersey that is? So, RGT have brought out the Buffalo bikes today for the Everesting Challenge. They've also brought out some other products so you have the hand cycle in rgt now which is limited in use to a uh, people it's representative for um it has different cda so it's not it's not applicable for many of the riders who ride a normal right bike but they also are now doing things like the Buffalo bike, which can only be rode by those riders who have completed the Everesting Challenge on behalf of World Bicycle Relief. They're bringing out jerseys as well for the national championships for, um, I know there's Canada, USA and Denmark. I'm not sure if there's any others been announced yet. We were, it was rumored there would be um, possibly five. I know there's negotiations still ongoing. Um, but they're, they're bringing out jerseys for those winners of those national championships that can only be worn by those riders so most of the other jerseys in the game can be swapped and changed around but um those particular ones will be only used by the winners of those national them for a year uh, 
are expecting that there will be some more products added to this um, exclusivity list. And it could be, for instance, there's a hot chili ride on a Monday evening. Um, hot chili have got their own jersey in game. Potentially, it could be that you can't wear the hot chili jersey unless you've completed one of their group rides and they supply you with the particular code. Likewise, PRT have their own kit in game. The, the yellow and black. Yeah, uh, wasps as they're often referred to. The same thing could potentially happen with that. You can only ride with that kit on if you've completed one of the handicap rides. Corkin's wearing the draft jersey. Two hundred and forty meters left. This demanding climb, and in final climb, there TSS is cranking up towards that hundred mark. Scenery all auto generated on the magic roads. All this is created by the computer's graphics, thought up by the computer basically. As you see, Corkin coming over the line. Still got Ian, Ian had it, his earlier issues, Ian's out on the course now, he's still got 840 metres left. If you can hear us Ian, give us a wave. This is your last climb. Small descent coming up. I have to try and catch up with Ian after the broadcast and see if we can find out what it was that caused the issues. Hopefully he's not snapped another chain. Ray is just saying thanks for the stream. It's a pleasure, Raya. Um, need to update your name on the YouTube system, you're still down as Raya Hubble. I'm only just getting used to Raya Russia, so you can't confuse me now. Ian wearing the Team 3R jersey. I think it's uh, Team 3R, it's the 3Rs, which is uh, race, ride, raise awareness, or something like that. Um, can see there it's in support of the World Bicycle Relief charity as well. Ian races frequently in the RGT platform here ever. Out racing in the evening you're probably going to see Ian on one of the courses. And he's also frequently in the Facebook pages as well. RGT is a great community on Facebook. Um, often getting comments in the, the chats on there about how friendly and helpful the community is. Uh, it's RGT users on the Facebook group. So if you're looking for any information, help, all sorts of things can be found there. Um, Obviously, there are official channels, official help on the RGT pages, and there's a, an official RGT port, which can be accessed through the apps and through email, but it's quite often very quick and easy to get the answers from the RGT community. Um, Will mentioned there is a search function on Facebook, though, which everyone seems to forget about. As Ian goes over the line there, 67th position, Allowing for one um, disqualification is TSS Thor. Score has topped the 100. And I think that that is our last rider going over there. And just got this slow coach now on the course. 
That isn't me, that is my bot who is just in there to help me with the camera work. So, with the last rider over the line, I've been Riley Harvey for VCN. This has been the Thursday night KRT handicap race. We'll be back with this race at 7 next week, but we will be covering other events in the meantime, so please check out the VCN Facebook page. And we will see you next time.